There is all of this year to use the most important debates at the moment for the farming industry, and it's quite worrying for many of us. Not only does it highlight the problems of our economy in the absence of CAP, but it also calls for an increase in pillar two funding to avoid voluntary modulation and place on an uneven playing field with our main competitors overseas. Points raised by the FEW time and time again. And when it comes to the finer details of the Welsh Government's proposal, the majority of these also reflect the views put forward by the FEW, showing the value of many meetings we've had with the Deputy Minister and officials, and they're working together to find common ground. And we've got to work to find common ground, because we've got to work together for the benefits of the industry and for the benefits of our members. The common ground we are, I was talking about now will no doubt be a key, the key focus when we meet Commissioner Eakam Piolas at the Royal Welsh Show this year. Of course, if the, FU, if the FUW was to agree with the government on everything, then there would be something very, very wrong. And there is one big difference of opinion over the past year which sticks out more than any other. And that is the U turn over a Bachelor Hill in North Cambridge. The 20th of March this year, I think, was a very black day for the industry. It was a black day for livestock farmers, especially in the intensive action area in Cambridge. And when we met John Griffiths in Cardiff that day, I came home very sad. We'd lost an opportunity to do something about the massive problem we have in Wales. For years we have been saying that half the problem, TV investors, is being ignored and we still feel like that as a leader. In evidence provided to the Welsh Government, we were finally given a figure by the scientists of how many confirmed outbreaks are likely to be caused by badgers in TB hotspots. And guess what that figure was? 50%. And what did the government decide to do? Ignore the 50% and vaccinate the rest. A complete waste of taxpayers' money. In the run up to its decision, the government had to wait five months. We waited five months. Then we, we were sick and tired of waiting. We should have had a, a decision much sooner. The Science Review Group produced a report telling us exactly what we knew. Five months for a 13 page summary of what we already knew. I can tell you now. If they feel that the policy departments are taking so long, it will be triple. So how can we possibly agree with a reversal of a policy for which our members, both inside the intensive action area and the cross rails, have paid and will pay so dearly, and which all the evidence tells us will need more of our members' cattle being slaughtered? That's inevitably, inevitably be going to happen again. <coughs> Nothing will improve at all. That is my view. Similarly, how could we ever support the previous coalition government's decision upheld by the current government to scrap Germany? What farming organisation in its right mind would support a loss of £25 million to the equivalent of Wales? So such differences are hardly surprising and I feel that there is duty bound to raise concern and lobby where such differences exist. However, these differences should not be allowed to eclipse all those common objectives that we share and the importance of government and the FUW working together was highlighted again and again in Gareth Williams' Working Smarter Report, which recognises the invaluable expertise and depth of knowledge gathered by the FUW over its 57 years of existence. The danger of ignoring this expertise is demonstrated regularly during the outcome of appeals, ombudsman of rulings, and even court cases. And also in terms of last year, 
some of these things, that's just where we're at. Perhaps we do. Anyway, I urge all of you who have not looked at it recently to do so. Because as a member in our county, he has a saying that when the, when the dairy cow is milking, milker, so at the moment it's the grass there that you should be milking because that is for the benefit of you as individuals. So look at the scheme. It has improved because the uh, proposed in last year's research review improvements have become much clearer now. So it could be a benefit for you. Anyway, we'll see how things go in the future. In simple terms, anyway, while glass steel may not be perfect, there is no doubt that nowhere near as many people would have entered the scheme where it got for the the bill. Yes, we would like to earn it back, but we also want glass steel to be accessible as possible so that our members can get into it can benefit by getting into it and can also do this with having, with, with, without it having a negative effect on your business, on the productivity of your farms. Because at the end of the day, it's producing food. That has got to be the priority. We know that the population of the world is going to increase by 2 billion. By 2050, by that time it will be 9 million. Are we ready for that? Are we going to allow other countries in Europe to produce this extra food for the extra population? I don't think that, that should be allowed to happen. We should be allowed to produce more food, produce more sheep, lamb, dairy products, call it what you like. But we've got to be allowed to produce food. Now, on the Day Thomas program this morning, I heard very encouraging news. Mm -hmm. And if I was farming up in Scotland, I would be more encouraged, more than I am really, because what was told in the uh, Scottish Highlands show yesterday was the government support the farming industry there to increase beef production in Scotland by 20%. That's really good news. I would love to hear reports like that from the assembly in Cardiff. Let us produce more beef, lamb, milk, cheese, whatever. Let us go down that road. I did say a few months ago that I'd be happier farming in construction. Well, I won't quite say that this morning, but uh, they are TV free up there. I don't think I could take my cattle up there if I went there up to farm. But they wouldn't want, perhaps they wouldn't want me either. But they definitely wouldn't want my cattle. Anyway, that's the route I think we should be going. But you see more food, because that's what will happen in the future. There will be more crop and By such improvements, I think that the FUW and government can work together on sometimes doing what are difficult conditions, there are others which are beyond our control. The future of the exchange rate, for example, is something we cannot influence, but it has a significant impact on the amount of money flowing into rural wheels through the single farm payment and the sale of our produce. But the ultimate impact of the turmoil in Europe or so on will be is impossible to predict that it could be severe, and this means that it's especially important that we do all we can to protect the CAP budget and Pillar 1 payments. That has got to be a priority minister. The Prime Minister Jim Pears recently reiterated the UK government's view that CAP spending should be reduced and more money moved without domestic co financing from direct payments to Pillar 2. Well, I know that our speaker today, the Prince Minister Alan Davis, is in regular contact with Mr. Pace. So I do hope that Mr. Davis can reassure us today that when he next speaks to Mr. Pace, he will make the Welsh position very clear to him. 
telling Mr. Davies that you are working on behalf of the families of Wales and you're going to do your utmost best for them and uh, tell him to worry about England. And I hope you will do, and I know you will try. I'm glad to hear that you've been in Luxembourg last week and uh, we wish you all the best anyway. So keep fighting for us and uh, with those few words I would like you now to give a warm welcome to the Deputy Minister.